I know it's hard to see us, but hopefully you can hear us. And today's a special day for Hickey Freeman, for Rochester Taylor Clothing, for everybody in the room. We have a very special guest here to talk to you about why it's a special day for us. And I have the honor of introducing him, and, and then I'm going to stand aside. But I do want to just tell everybody that we have a guardian angel in Washington. You know that. I've told you that many times. That's the nickname we have for our fearless leader. And it's, it's, it's beyond important. It's, it's moving, to be quite honest with you, with what he's dealing with in Washington, that one of the first visits he makes when he can leave Washington is to Hickey Freeman in Rochester. And what it took to survive this <clears throat> pandemic was no small feat from you, from us, and from our policymakers and our legislators who are led by this man beside me. So I want to say thank you, thank you. in front of everybody here, because we're not only now surviving, we're now thriving. We have a wonderful future, a wonderful past, a wonderful future. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to our majority leader, our guardian angel, Chuck Schumer. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Well, first, I'm going to take off my Hickey Freeman mask. True to Hickey Freeman, it is, it is durable, it is comfortable, it covers your whole face. It's the best mask you can get. And we want to see the federal government asking Hickey to make a lot of these masks so we can deal with no shortages of PPP in the future. I'll get to that in a minute. First, let me take off the mask. And of course, today is the first colder day, so I have a whole bunch of Hickey Freeman suits. But some are more light and some are heavier. This is the first day I'm wearing my wool Hickey Freeman. Here you go, everybody. Make sure you, make sure you see it. Got the label. Great, okay. So I want to thank my colleagues. First, I want to thank the great Steve Granofsky. He has done an amazing job. When this company was having trouble, as you know, we needed to find someone not, who not only who had a great brain to make sure to figure out how to keep the plant going, but a great heart who understood the workers, all of you, and how much work you put into this, and your travails, and how your families depend on the good paying jobs here. We wanted to find someone who wouldn't just be here for a year in Vamoose. And we found him in Steve Granofsky. He cares about you. He cares about Hickey. He cares about Rochester. And it's always been a pleasure working with him to help Hickey Freeman. So let's have a round of applause for Steve Granofsky. <laughs> he works very closely with Gary Bonadonna from the union. I'm proud to say that this is a union plant. And uh, there have been generations of Bonadonnas like uh, I don't know, generations, not of you, not of you. You're the only generational one. Um, but thank the union as well for the good work they do. And you'll hear from two of my colleagues who I'll introduce in a few minutes, but Rochester has always had very high quality elected officials. And two at the top of the list are your great Congressman Joe Morelli and your great County Executive Adam Bello, who I'll talk about when I introduce each of them. And we also have here Vinny Esposito. Where are you, Vinny? Oh, I didn't see him. Okay. He's not here from Empire State. So, my history with Hickey goes way back, and I'm so proud to see that Hickey's in full swing. I want to thank the workers. I want to thank you for your incredible artistry, your world-class skill that has kept this 122-year-old institution not only surviving, but thriving once again. So thank you for that. And I say that as your senator, but also as your customer. <laughs> Although I do go to the warehouse sale, you know. <laughs> That's OK. Um, but in any case, uh, I'm first, I'm here to announce some great news. We're proud to say that Hickey Freeman is set up for a bright future with new production and 100 new jobs coming to this plant. Is that great news? Under a new deal that is bringing in new business, we're announced, I'm announcing today that Hickey Freeman will be adding 100 new jobs here in Rochester to manufacture suits and made-to-measure apparel 
for new customers. Winning this new production is a direct result of all the years that the workers, the management, and all of us have worked to bring this facility back from the brink. When creditors threatened to liquidate, we fought them back and won, saving these hundreds of jobs. And then when overseas competitors exploited the tariff laws to undercut this factory, I secured the Wool Trust Fund, which has put Hickey Freeman back on a level playing field with foreign competitors. When they were able to pay a lot less for wool because of tariffs and stuff, it put you at a competitive disadvantage. We stopped that. That was a big job, but we got it done. So year after year, I've been committed to ensuring that Hickey Freeman can maintain a robust pro pro presence here in Rochester. And I couldn't be pr more proud that this company has continued to grow and prosper. You represent the best of America. When people wonder about the future of Rochester, of this area, of our country, just look at what's happened here. And we're growing, not shrinking, and doing better and better. Uh, now, in, in fact, Hickey has already hired 14 of the 100 new jobs last week. And they're actively recruiting. So tell your friends and neighbors, they're looking. OK. <laughs> Now one more thing I'm discussing, which I'm working with Congressman Morelli on, that could ramp up business for Hickey Freeman in even more. In the upcoming bill in Washington, the infrastructure bill, which you've heard about, I worked hard to secure the Make PPP PPE in America Act in the bipartisan infrastructure plan that passed the Senate. It includes a Marshall Plan to ensure that the federal government uses American-made PPE right here using f companies like Hickey Freeman. You all remember the shortages of PPE. And one of the reasons is we didn't make much of it in America. Much of it was made overseas, and those overseas manufacturers gave their own countries preference. So you saw the pictures of nurses wearing, using garbage bags over their faces and plastic and things like that. You saw so many people on the front lines unable to secure safe equipment. That's because so much of it was made overseas. But the Make PPE in America Act will make sure that never happens again, and it will give Hickey Freeman a chance for a long-term long contracts to make PPE with a long-term customer, the federal government, which will stockpile it and then give it and use it and sell it to people who need it, God forbid, when there's another crisis like COVID. So this is a very, very good thing. So I'll give you a little more background. As I said, first, the Make PPE in America Act, part of the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which you're now hearing about being discussed in Washington and which we hope to pass very soon, it'll guarantee long-term, multi-year contracts for U.S.-made PPE for the federal government. We know the lack of long-term contracts was a major reason U.S. suppliers either went out of business or gave up on making PPE. However, that left us very vulnerable in the U.S. for supply chains. We were totally at the mercy of Asia and other countries, other continents, to produce the PPE we desperately needed because we, as a country, unfortunately, had neglected domestic manufacturing for too long. But now having a long-term customer in the federal government, which will incentivize this industry to grow now and into the future, access to these contracts will be limited to only American companies like Hickey Freeman. And you can be sure I'm going to fight tooth and nail once we pass this law to make sure, guess who gets one of those big federal contracts? Hickey Freeman, because they make such great material. You all make such great material like this mask that I am wearing now. By the way, I hope you'll understand I chose the blue one, not the red one, for obvious reasons. Now, um, the contracts would create even more jobs for Hickey, grow the business to new heights. The second in the act, we also require the feds to create a long-term supply plan of incentives so that there's a long-term plan, not just individual contracts for this, that, and the other thing, but so Hickey can say, ah, in three years from now, they're going to have another big contract for this, and we can gear up and try to win the contract as well. During the darkest days of COVID, companies like Hickey stepped up to the plate I remember um, our, our local hospitals needed PPE. They couldn't get it. And Hickey, made it. you made it here and sold it at a loss because you cared about 
uh, our hospitals that did, couldn't get the PPE here in the Rochester area. So uh, RG, uh, Rochester General called, Hickey Freeman answered, even though it wasn't going to be a moneymaker. But all of you here produced face masks, basic PPE that was hard to get, and we thank you for doing that uh, during the difficult times that our hospitals and everyone else was having. So Hickey took a financial hit to help the community and the health care workers at Rochester General. Your generosity is not forgotten, and that's one of the reasons I think we can rely on you and we can tell the federal government why a place like Hickey deserves these contracts. Okay? Worse, our own federal government didn't tap into this factory. And the skilled workers that are here to make the PPE that the nation needed. Ironically, just to show you the contrast, there's a sister factory up in Montreal owned by the same company. Canada, the Canadian government hired that, comp, comp, uh, that factory to make PPE in Canada. Why didn't we do the same? Our Made in America PPE Act will make sure that doesn't happen again. We'll make sure that we do it. So that's why it's so important. Okay, so number one, not only will our efforts strengthen the domestic PPE supply chain and create a dependable supply of critical materials, but it means a four-letter word for Hickey Freeman and Rochester. Jobs, J-O-B-S, two four-letter words. More jobs, M-O-R-E-J-O-B-S. So we're going to fight to get this done so you can have even more fellow workers here enjoying and working hard for the good of this community and the country. Thank you. Now, there are two people here who are going to speak who have been my partners all along, one at the national level and one at the local level. Joe Morelli, he was a great assemblyman. He was majority leader of the assembly because his colleagues respected him so. And he's been a great congressman, fighting tooth and nail for this area in every way. We have been friends for a very long time, and he really has been a great, great leader for this community and a great, great leader for the country. Uh, let me call on Joe. Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, always wonderful to be at Hickey Freeman, one of Rochester's most iconic businesses. And although I chose purple because it matched my tie a little better, I like the blue as well. But uh, thank you to Stephen for his visionary leadership. Um, as I said, an iconic company, but it's not as though you uh, just rest on your laurels. You have to keep moving forward. You keep have to work. And I want to thank Senator Schumer. I have known Senator Schumer before he was a United States Senator. He was in the House of Representatives, where I have the privilege of serving. And, um, you know, Senator Schumer is working on a global stage now as the majority leader. So every national issue he is a party to, he's negotiating, he's working on behalf of people here in Rochester and around the country. But despite the fact that he's all these responsibilities nationwide, he has never forgotten the people who have elected him. He's never forgotten local communities like Rochester. Uh, he is a true friend to everyone in Rochester and uh, an American patriot. So I'm, I'm delighted always to be with my friend Senator Schumer and thank him for all the incredible work that he does. Um, I'm also grateful to be with Monroe County Executive Adam Bellow who's been a steadfast leader in our community, who's led through the most challenging time uh, in our country's history uh, and has done it with such vision, such uh, tenacity, uh, so it's great to be with them. It's a privilege to have to educate partners, um, both at the county level and certainly at the national level, to help advance Monroe County's future. And as I said, Hickey Freeman has been an essential part of Rochester's community fabric, may I say, pun intended, um, for more than a century. But generations have grown up to know that the name of Hickey Freeman is synonymous with, uh, with Rochester. But even more important, it's proved critically important to the strength and success of our regional economy. It's been a long-standing pillar of economic opportunity in our community for all who come here, sustaining hundreds of quality jobs, contributing to essential workforce development initiatives, and creating pathways of success for neighborhood families. And they are dedicated, as Senator Schumer said, what they did during the, the, the pandemic, uh, answering the call to produce quickly much needed PPE is something that served our national interest and we are continue to be grateful for them. And their swift action was, as Senator said, particularly important to healthcare workers uh, who were in need during the, the pandemic. 
<clears throat> as a longtime proponent of the Buy American provisions, I'm proud to support Senator Schumer's plan to strengthen American-made PPE opportunities so that manufacturers like Hickey Freeman can continue to lead in this space. And the Marshall Plan, this Marshall Plan, which uh, conjures up uh, all the uh, great things that America did following the tragedy of World War II, we're doing uh, in following the wake of the pandemic to make us better prepared for the future by bolstering our domestic supply uh, of uh, PPE and other things in the supply chain. So I'm thrilled that this plan, combined with new contract agreements, will ensure Hickey Freeman continues to grow, create new job opportunities for our community and for people in this region, and continue to uh, allow us to prosper. And I uh, want to thank Stephen, of course, Gary Bonadon, and all the members of Workers United, uh, my friend Adam uh, Bellow, but most importantly, to thank Senator Schumer for his tireless advocacy on behalf of Rochester, the state of New York, and the entire American public. So thank you so much. Godspeed. Thank you, Gary. You know, I, I mentioned earlier I knew, I knew uh, Joe Morelli as Assemblyman, and I knew watching him as Assemblyman, he'd be a great congressman. Well, I knew Adam Bellow when he was the supervisor, the town supervisor of the town of Arundacoit. And he did a great job. He just stood out on so many issues that we worked with. So when he decided to run and now win county executive, I knew he'd do a great job, and he really has. He's everywhere in this county. He did an amazing job getting the county out of COVID. You know, I worked very hard to see that Rochester got money, and they got over 200, the uh, county of Monroe, Rochester as well, but the county of Monroe got money. I think total they got over $250 million to deal with COVID and deal with all the problems that our small businesses had, that individuals had, et cetera. And I did that, I worked hard knowing that if you gave that money to the county and put it in the hands of this county executive, it would be wisely spent, and so it has been. He's a great leader, and I'm proud to announce him, Adam Bellow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Leader. It's uh, uh, really an honor and privilege to be here with you and uh, Congressman Morelli, and I can't thank you enough. And uh, I, I did want to start by saying we cannot have two better federal representatives in Washington fighting for us here in Monroe County and Rochester than Senator Schumer and Congressman Morelli. Uh, Senator Schumer just said it best. Uh, this county received, between our CARES Act funding and our ARPA dollars, roughly of a quarter billion dollars to help fight the COVID pandemic in our area. And those investments that they brought here to Monroe County helped us to get to where we are today, where we've managed the virus, we're coming out of this pandemic, and we're doing our number one responsibility in government, which is to pr protect the health and safety of all of our residents. So let's give them a round of applause for the work that they have done here in our community. I also want to thank, St uh, again, Mr. Gronowski, thank you so much for hosting us today. And for each and every one of these employees, look at all these employees who are here today for the work that you have done here at Hickey Freeman uh, and the contributions you're making to our community. I can't thank you enough, particularly in your response also how you've adjusted to COVID-19. You guys have just done a fantastic job. You know, Hickey Freeman really pitched in and instantly produced vital PPE for our healthcare workers when global supplies were scarce. And it's another example of American innovation, which shouldn't surprise us because here in Rochester and Monroe County, we have a rich history of business innovation. We're the home of innovation. We have visionaries like Henry Strong spinning off his buggy whip to business to invest in George Eastman's photography vision that then blossomed into Kodak. Bausch & Lomb went from manufacturing monocles and rubber eyeglass frames to inventing soft contact lenses and other pre precision vision products. Xerox invents office copiers and digital printing. The first automobile was patented in Rochester. Innovation is in our DNA. In 1899, Hickey Freeman began making high quality men's suits, but soon seized uh, on the idea of bringing higher quality to ready-to-wear suits, an amazing innovation now, then and continues to be now. Hickey Freeman has been in the existence for more than 120 years, but it's changed with the times while maintaining the quality standard on which it was built. And it's amazed how quickly, how quickly now you've pivoted to produce PPE for our frontline healthcare workers. And that's why today's announcement is so critical. I cannot thank Senator Schumer enough, enough, and I want to applaud your Marshall Plan for a reliable domestic supply of PPE. It is needed now more than it ever has been before. The Make PPE in America Act is great news for Hickey Freeman, 
It's great news for Monroe County, and it's great news for American workers. It assures reliable domestic supply chain of vital PPE and creates opportunities for the American companies that change their operations to produce PPE when we needed them the most. This past weekend, because of the work of Majority Leader Schumer and Congressman Morelli, we were able to announce our plans to engage the public in our investments of $144 million in ARPA plan money. These are vital funds uh, that, that our uh, Congress members and senators have fought to bring home to Monroe County. And, and Senator, I will make a commitment to you. We will invest these funds wisely. And one of our top priorities has got to be economic growth. Whether it's news here from Hickey Freeman, how we're supporting local companies, jobs that are being created, and, uh, and how we fulfill our plans to bring Monroe County back from the economic pause that was created by the pandemic. The support of our federal partners is necessary, it's needed, and it's arrived. So as Monroe County starts its bicentennial year, it's fitting to start off our next 200 years with one of our business icons, Hickey Freeman, expanding their operations and growing yet again here in Monroe County. Thank you very much for your support. Congratulations. Okay. Uh, we'll first take questions on this subject. Are the jobs permanent and are they just for PPE or are they for No, the new jobs that are coming, they don't, they're doing, they have a new uh, company that they're going to make, make uh, suits for. They don't want to say who it is, but it's a new company. So that's in addition to whatever jobs we'd get for the PPE. That's happening now, the 100 jobs, not because of PPE. So actually, this is brand new. Um, we've worked very hard the past three months to build this business, and only recently have signed a number of new customers, a couple of very large ones, uh, and the result is that this factory will be as busy as we can hire it to be. And uh, no, that's all very brand new and very recent. What this company has always done, in all the years I've known, particularly under Steve's leadership, is look to partner with other companies who want the high quality workforce here even if they don't make it exactly under their label, and that creates jobs. The, uh, wage, what are the wage rates that your tires want? Um, that's a good question. The, the wage rates are increasing um, across <laughs> this. Uh, yeah, we, we've got a pretty tough union partner uh, that is making sure of that. Um, but uh, we, have a, we have an incredibly uh, advanced compensation scheme, right? We have a unionized environment very, very leading edge benefits, pension funds, and wages. Uh, and, and so we're not spelling out a specific number with the new hires. Uh, we're doing whatever it takes to bring these people in. Okay. Uh, that's a good question. It means we need more space. Um, so we're in discussions with home leasing about how we make sure we have enough space to house all of these people. Um, but that's a good problem to have. That's not a bad problem to have. And I, I just want to add, add one other thing that we recognize. And Chuck, I know you do. That's why you come every time. I, I met a supervisor this morning who'd been here 47 years. Wow. John, who runs our factory, is probably the best talent in the industry. 